The study of archaeology has been long hindered by a series of consequential misunderstandings. The promoted narrative about ancient cultures and their creations are not as accurate as academia wants you to believe. The details regarding when these structures were made, who made them, how they were built, and for what purpose have been largely misinterpreted. And the reason for this is because the truth is contrary to the promoted narrative of history. In order to understand the real origins of these ancient structures, we must study them from the ground up, both figuratively and literally. It is crucial to fully analyze the material that these structures were made from, and if the material that they're made from has been misidentified, which is the case for an astonishing amount of ancient structures, then that fundamentally changes our interpretation of their origins. To understand the compositions of these ancient structures, it's necessary to examine the types of rocks that exist on Earth currently. Earth's geology varies greatly in appearance and composition. Among the most notable geological formations on the surface of the Earth include the Grand Canyon in Arizona, which is made of dozens of colorful layers of sedimentary rocks, including limestone, sandstone, and shale. Then there's the Twelve Apostles off the coast of Australia, which are large pillars of organic limestone made from the compacted remains of calcium carbonate-rich organisms. Mount Everest in Nepal is composed of a combination of igneous rocks, inorganic sedimentary rocks, and organic sedimentary rocks, which contain fossils of marine organisms. In Utah, there's the Bryce Canyon and the Arches National Park, both of which are made of stratified sandstone in a stunning variety of colors. The Rainbow Basin in California is made of an interesting variety of rocks, including the igneous rock quartz monzonite, as well as volcanoclastic sediments and volcanic ash. And there are countless other intricate geological formations across the world, which have been formed from a variety of complex processes. Sedimentary rocks are commonly formed from the deposition and compaction of layers of sand, silt, and in the case of organic sedimentary rocks, the remains of plants and animals. Igneous rocks are formed from tectonic activity, which causes minerals to melt, and upon cooling, they become igneous rocks. Sometimes igneous rocks form inside of the Earth, and other times they form on the Earth's surface. Metamorphic rocks are created from minerals and rocks that have been reformed by heat and pressure. The ways in which both smaller rocks and larger geological structures are formed gives them their distinctive features. The vast majority of rocks are stratified, foliated, and contain other erratic characteristics such as class, fossils, and dropstones. An unnoticed oddity is that ancient stone structures are not made of any of the previously mentioned types of stone, despite the abundance of clastic and stratified rocks across the earth, as well as the visual appeal of these more intricate types of rocks, and their suitability for stonemasonry. In this video, we're going to be exploring the different types of materials that have been used for construction throughout history, and the significance of each of them as they apply to the timeline of megalithic construction and major events throughout Earth's history. In the earliest ancient structures, only inorganic rocks had been used as a building material. Inorganic rock is different from organic rock because the inorganic rock is simply composed of lithified minerals and does not contain the remains of once living organisms. Examination of these structures reveals that they are all made of inorganic rock, primarily inorganic limestone and unstratified sandstone. No organic materials, such as fossils or corals, are found within the original rocks that were used to build the structures, and this is notable given the rarity of inorganic limestone compared to organic limestone as geological features that currently exist. An example of an ancient structure made of inorganic limestone is the Hypogeum of Malta. Previously, this structure had been erroneously identified as being composed of organic limestone, which was referred to as Globigerina limestone, due to the abundance of Globigerina limestone in the surrounding area. When the Hypogeum was originally constructed, however, Globigerina limestone was not able to be used as a building material, 
because globigerina limestone was not present anywhere. Since the conditions to form globigerina or any other type of organic or stratified sedimentary rocks had not yet occurred. There is no geological evidence that the rocks composing the Hypogeum of Malta are made from any organic materials. Through petrographic microscopy, only the currently existing globigerina limestone on the coast of Malta has been confirmed to be composed of organic material. No tests have indicated that the Hypogeum's rocks consist of organic materials. Globigerina limestone and other types of organic sedimentary rocks were created during the Second Ancient Cataclysm, also known as the Worldwide Flood, when there was a mass extinction of marine and other life, which accumulated, compacted, and lithified rapidly due to the force and hydrostatic pressure of the very deep floodwaters. The floodwaters were also heated and mineral-rich due to the co-occurring worldwide tectonic activities, contributing to more rapid lithification of organic materials during the cataclysm. Only structures created after the worldwide flood were able to be made from the rocks that were created by the flood. There are many more ancient pre-cataclysmic structures, in addition to the Hypogeum of Malta, that were made from inorganic pre-cataclysmic rocks, and these structures will be examined later in this video. But before then, it's important to discuss the other types of rocks that were used to build ancient structures and the origins of those rocks. This way, you'll have a better understanding of the types of materials that ancient builders did and did not use, and when the different types of building materials were used. Prior to the worldwide cataclysm, there was a first smaller catastrophe, which flooded a third of the earth. During this first ancient cataclysm, which initiated the breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea, there were intense tectonic activities that set off volcanoes worldwide, so that even during this first smaller catastrophe, large amounts of igneous rocks were formed, including granite and basalt. These igneous rocks had not been available on the surface of the Earth for ancient builders to construct with before the first catastrophe. Volcanic clastic materials, such as tuff, were also created by the first catastrophe due to the copious amounts of ash emitted from the widespread volcanic eruptions. This enabled ancient builders, after the first catastrophe, to build structures out of the lithified volcanic ash. The formation of tuff was explained in depth in a previous video on this channel about the Malta cart ruts, where we had explored some tracks that had been left by ancient people as they traversed through the dense mounds of volcanic ash during the first catastrophe, and these tracks were preserved when the volcanic ash lithified. An ancient text known as Sefer HaYashar, or the Book of Jasher, explains that the first catastrophe occurred as a warning from God to convince the inhabitants of Earth to stop doing immoral things constantly. And the Lord caused the waters of the river Gihan to overwhelm them, and he destroyed and consumed them, and he destroyed the third part of the Earth. And notwithstanding this, the sons of men did not turn from their evil ways, and their hands were yet extended to do evil in the sight of the Lord. And every man made unto himself a god, and they robbed and plundered every man his neighbor, as well as his relative. And they corrupted the earth, and the earth was filled with violence. And the sons of men in those days took from the cattle of the earth, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the air, and taught the mixture of animals of one species with the other, in order therewith to provoke the Lord. And God saw the whole earth, and it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted its ways upon earth, all men and all animals. And aside from humans and animals being corrupt, there were other creatures also doing corrupt things, which in many cases were worse than what the humans were doing, and those creatures needed to be eradicated as well. After the first warning catastrophe, God instructed Noah and Methuselah to warn everyone that he would give them 120 years to correct their behaviors, and if the corrupt people did not correct their behaviors, God would have to wipe the entire world clean with a cataclysm in order to eliminate their corruption. And after the lapse of many years, in the 480th year of the life of Noah, when all those men who followed the Lord had died away from amongst the sons of men, and only Methuselah was then left, God said unto Noah and Methuselah, saying, Speak ye, and proclaim to the sons of men, saying, Thus saith the Lord, 
return from your evil ways and forsake your works, and the Lord will dismiss the punishment that he declared to do to you, so that it shall not come to pass. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I give you a period of one hundred and twenty years. If you will turn to me and forsake your evil ways, then I will also turn away from the punishment which I told you, and it shall not exist, saith the Lord. But the sons of men would not hearken to them, nor incline their ears to their words, and they were stiff-necked. And the Lord granted them a period of one hundred and twenty years, saying, If they will return, then will God dismiss their punishment, so as to not destroy the earth. Instead of taking Noah and Methuselah's advice to correct their behaviors so that God would not have to reset the world, the corrupt individuals on earth instead began to prepare for the worldwide catastrophe by creating shelters in the hopes of preserving themselves and their wicked culture so that they could continue on with their corruption. The tectonic activity during the first warning catastrophe lasted for an extended period of time, and as the tectonic activity continued leading up to the worldwide flood, the intrusive igneous rocks formed beneath the Earth's surface were pushed to the surface of the Earth, eventually becoming available for ancient builders to construct their shelters with. And there was enough time to do so, because there was a gap of 120 years between the first warning catastrophe and the second catastrophe, known as the Worldwide Flood. The geology of numerous geological features across the world can be used to demonstrate the order in which the various types of rocks were formed. One example is the geology of Mount Everest. The center of the mountain range is composed of inorganic limestone, which does not contain any fossils. The top portion of the mountain range, on the other hand, is composed of organic limestone, which contains many fossils, notably marine fossils. This arrangement indicates that the inorganic limestone base had existed first and marine sediments were deposited and compacted on top of this inorganic limestone base. Beneath the inorganic limestone, there's a foundation of granite. Granite is an intrusive igneous rock that was formed beneath the surface of the Earth and pushed upwards towards the Earth's surface by further tectonic activities. The same geological pattern is present in the composition of other mountain ranges worldwide, including the Teton Range in Wyoming, and the Jodenheimen Range in Norway and Sweden. The Ural Mountain Range, dividing Europe and Asia, contains numerous granitic batholiths and stocks within greater igneous intrusions, as well as the original inorganic basement rock. The Carboniferous Organic Sedimentary Rock is only present above the inorganic basement rock and the igneous rock meaning that the organic sedimentary rocks were deposited on top of the inorganic basement rock and the igneous rock. The regions in which large amounts of granite were utilized by ancient builders indicates where the most volcanic activities had been during the extent of the first catastrophe, which made igneous rocks available for use in construction. Ancient structures made of granite include the Barabar Caves in India, the granite outcropping containing the unfinished obelisk in Egypt, and the Veduvan Coil and Hampi temples in India. There are also many ancient structures made of the extrusive igneous rock basalt, including the low-profile rock-cut church in Ethiopia, the Kailasa temple, and the Ellora and Ajanta cave structures in India. During the first cataclysm, some rocks were manipulated by heat and pressure, Granitic gneiss is an example of a metamorphic rock that was used in some ancient constructions between the first and second catastrophes. Granitic gneiss is granite that has been heated and warped, causing the crystal grains in the rock to become distorted. Granitic gneiss contains stripes of differently colored minerals, and these stripes are called gneissic banding. Although gneissic banding looks similar to stratified sandstone, the process that creates gneissic banding is caused by intense pressure and heat, which causes the crystals in the rock to align into bands. It's crucial to understand the processes which create each type of rock, and to be able to correctly identify these materials. The misidentification of rocks gives us an entirely incorrect understanding of the material's history, the types of processes that contributed to the formation of the material, as well as the environment in which it was formed. In terms of archaeology, whether these rocks are correctly identified is foundational to either our understanding or misunderstanding 
of how and when these structures were built. A team of geologists went to Sacsayhuaman in Peru to analyze the composition of the rocks used to build the structure. At the location that was believed to be the quarry for Sacsayhuaman, the geologists took thin sections of the rocks, and the rocks from the assumed quarry site were found to be full of small fossils, indicating that the rocks were organic, having been made from the remains of organisms. When the geologists took thin sections of the Sacsayhuaman rocks, however, they found that the rocks composing Sacsayhuaman were uniform in composition and appearance, and they lacked any organic matter, revealing that the Sacsayhuaman rocks are inorganic and non-clastic. The mineral composition of the Sacsayhuaman wall rocks is the same as inorganic limestone, and they are not igneous rocks, though there is evidence of contact metamorphism on some sections of the Sacsayhuaman walls indicating that they had been subject to high heat at some point in the past, but they have not been fully metamorphosed. The geologists confirmed that the rocks composing Sacsayhuaman are inorganic limestone. There is no evidence to indicate that the site containing organic limestone rocks was where the ancient builders had acquired the stones to build Sacsayhuaman, and this was only an assumption before the rocks were analyzed. In fact, these organic rocks were not even created until after Sacsayhuaman was built, because Sacsayhuaman was built before the worldwide flood, which created the other organic rocks, which are not a part of the Sacsayhuaman structure. A large boulder near the Sacsayhuaman wall, which is partially buried and was clearly carved and used by the ancient builders, was also examined by geologists, and they found that this rock was also uniform in composition and lacked any organic materials meaning that this rock too, which appears to have been carved by the same group that built Sacsayhuaman, is also entirely inorganic in composition. Compare this scenario with the Hypogeum of Malta, which was discussed earlier in the video. It was assumed that the ancient builders had used Globigerina limestone quarried from the coast of Malta, simply because Globigerina limestone is found in abundance in Malta now, mainly on the coast. But much like the stones that were found at the assumed quarry site for Sacsayhuaman, the Globigerina limestone found on the coast of Malta does not have the same characteristics as the rocks used to build the Hypogeum. Unfortunately, once rocks have been labeled, it's generally accepted without further questioning. This makes it so that rocks can be misidentified by geologists, and unless there is an important reason to question their identification, they will continue to be referred to as the incorrect type of rock. This is especially true in regard to certain types of rocks that look very similar to one another, but have different compositions and methods of formation. For example, quartz manzanite is commonly mistaken for granite because these two types of rock are so similar in appearance. Another type of rock, known as arcos, which is a type of sandstone, has an appearance and mineral composition similar to the igneous rock granite. Both arcos and granite are composed primarily of quartz and feldspar, with small amounts of mica. Arcos even comes in the same colors as granite, with the most common varieties of arcos being the same shades of pink and gray as the most common types of granite. The crystal size and texture of these two types of rocks are the primary indication of their identity, with granite having larger crystals that are tightly fit together while Arcos has smaller and less dense crystals. Keeping the properties of these rocks and the ways that they're formed in mind, as well as the fact that rocks are often misidentified, and the fact that many ancient structures, such as Sacsayhuaman and the Hypogeum, were falsely assumed to have been made from rocks that are currently in the area, which do not have the same characteristics as those structures. We can now observe the materials that were used to build other ancient structures, and observe that they too may have been misidentified. One example are the stones that were used to build the polygonal wall on Hatun Rumiak Street in Cusco, Peru. The ancient polygonal walls, consisting of the well-known 12-angled stone, has been identified as green diorite. Several factors indicate that rather than being green diorite, these rocks are actually another type of stone called glauconite. The color of the ancient walls in Cusco are a solid, pale green, not the dark, speckled green that green diorite is. The grain size of the polygonal stones are smaller than that of green diorite, but is consistent with the grain size of glauconite. The luster of the polygonal walls 
is also very dull. Green diorite has a semi-glossy luster due to the presence of crystalline grains in green diorite, whereas glauconite has a dull luster matching the luster of the Cusco walls. These polygonal walls appear to be composed of glauconite and not green diorite as they had previously been labeled. The point of mentioning this is that we have to be alert to potential discrepancies in the identification of these rocks. And because the materials that many of these ancient structures are made from have been misidentified, then this limits our ability to understand how these structures were built, and even when they were made. As explained earlier, the second cataclysm, which is known historically by many cultures as the Worldwide Flood, created the organic sedimentary rocks, such as chalk, coal, diatomite, in some forms of dolomites and organic limestones. The majority of metamorphic rocks on Earth were also created during the second catastrophe, the Worldwide Flood, due to the intensity and wide range of the tectonic activity, which was even greater than that during the first catastrophe. And the floodwaters that were present during the second catastrophe were deep, mineral-rich, and high temperature, exerting an abundance of hydrostatic pressure on already existing rocks. After the second catastrophe, the survivors were able to use the newly formed flood-made rocks, including organic sedimentary rocks such as coralline limestone, as well as the stratified rocks that were created when layers of sediment were deposited, compacted, and lithified during the worldwide flood. Evidence of previous saturation with mineral-rich floodwaters in the past can be observed in the form of mineral stains on the surface of many pre-cataclysmic structures. These mineral stains were caused by a combination of calcium carbonate deposition when the structures had been saturated with calcium carbonate-rich floodwaters, leaving white stains on the rock, and the catalyzed oxidation of iron on the surface of the stone due to prolonged saturation with impure water, creating the discolored bands on the rock. Ancient structures, such as the Badami Caves in India and Petra in Jordan, have rings of calcium carbonate and iron oxide deposits, called lysagon rings, created by the chemical segregation of iron oxides and other minerals during weathering. There are also vertical mineral stains on the exterior of many of the ancient structures, which were left by mineral-rich water running down the structures. The lysagon rings were formed due to minerals being left by precipitation reactions as the floodwaters evaporated, comparable to the processes that create mineral stains on ceilings in modern buildings after flooding. Although it may seem that these ancient structures are made of stratified rock, these rocks are not stratified. The stripes on the rock were only caused by discoloration from staining that occurred after the structures were built. The structures of Petra were built from red sandstone that is unstratified and does not contain fossils, but on top of and surrounding the red sandstone that contains the Petra structures, there are deposits of white sandstone that have been compacted. These deposits of white sandstone are stratified and do contain fossils. The team had found white sand in a valley exclusively of red rock. What they uncovered was these massive beds of a very white sandstone that would lead us to conclude that Petra may have literally been hit by a massive, massive flood. During both ancient catastrophes, especially the second worldwide catastrophe, many ancient structures were damaged due to scouring by debris, weathering, and the deposition of flood-carried sediments onto and around the structures. Post-worldwide flood societies across the world discovered these pre-cataclysmic structures and they excavated them, repaired them, and appropriated them. Many of these pre-flood structures have been repaired even more recently, especially during the 1800s. The Abu Simbel structure in Egypt, for example, was originally created before the second ancient catastrophe, known as the Worldwide Flood, which was initially made from unstratified sandstone. The structure now appears to be stratified, however, due to the methods that were recently used to reconstruct Abu Simbel when the entire structure was relocated between 1968 and 1979. The way in which the statues have been dismantled and reassembled left marks similar in appearance to stratifications. 
However, these markings are simply due to the stone being cut horizontally and the gaps being filled in with mortar upon reconstruction. The other types of discoloration on the Abu Simbel structure are a result of mineral staining, comparable to the mineral staining visible on other ancient structures, such as Petra. Although Abu Simbel appears to be a pre-cataclysmic structure containing stratifications, it actually has been altered from its original appearance, and even altered from its original composition, with mortar now filling the recently carved spaces that were not originally present. Another example of pre-cataclysmic structures that have been heavily modified during recent reconstruction are the Tarshin temples in Malta. Smaller rectangular blocks of stone can be seen added to sections of the temple that had once been decimated by the second catastrophe, as opposed to the original megaliths used by pre-cataclysmic builders, which fit together snugly and are well carved. The reconstructed sections are easy to identify because the stones used are either poorly carved or completely uncarved, and some of the stones fit together so poorly that mortar had to be used to hold them together. Regular repairs are still necessary to prevent the reconstructed sections from falling apart. While the original parts of the structure do not require the same maintenance, pre-cataclysmic structures did not need mortar at all. The same type of post-catastrophe repairs can be seen in many other ancient structures across the world. The Mundishwari Temple in India, for example, was initially made from solid granite stone, which indicates that it was constructed after the first catastrophe. The top portion of the structure was heavily damaged during the second catastrophe, leading to repairs after the worldwide flood. These repairs were made using smaller stone blocks, many of which are crudely carved and are held together by mortar, starkly contrasting with the original parts of the structure. The Hampi temples in India were also significantly damaged during the worldwide flood. Repair attempts to the Hampi temples have gathered the scattered remnants of the structures, haphazardly restacking the stones. Unlike the pre-flood builders, modern rebuilders have difficulty working with megaliths. Smaller stones were therefore used when repairing the damaged structures whenever possible, in conjunction with poorly restacking the original megaliths. This trend can be seen in almost every repaired pre-flood structure, although it can be difficult to identify when some structures have been heavily modified and rebuilt. No pre-cataclysmic structures are made from stratified rock composed of layers of lithified sediment. The reason why there are no pre-cataclysmic structures made from stratified rock is because the conditions had not yet occurred to create stratified rock, at least not in enough abundance to use for construction. The large masses of stratified rock that are present across the world currently were created when large amounts of sediment and debris were transported, deposited into layers, and compacted during the worldwide flood. No fossils are present inside of the stone blocks composing any pre-cataclysmic structures. Geologists have discovered small marine fossils on the surface of some of the stone blocks composing the Great Pyramids of Giza. Despite fossils being found on the surface of the blocks, no fossils have actually been found embedded inside of any of the pyramid's blocks. They are only attached to the surface, meaning that the organism, which appears to be a marine creature called an echinoid, was deposited onto the stone block after it was carved. This implies that seawater with echinoids in it had passed over the Great Pyramids after they were built and the echinoid was fossilized without burial due to the immense hydrostatic pressure which was exerted by the extremely deep and mineral-rich floodwaters. The only fossils in the area that have been discovered embedded inside of rocks were found in the neighboring regions surrounding the Great Pyramids, but these rocks were never used to build the pyramids themselves. The fossils in the rocks found near the Great Pyramids are clearly embedded inside of the rocks, which indicates that these fossils were intermixed with sediment during the flood, and the conglomerate became cemented and lithified during the process, and turning the marine organisms intermixed with the sediment in the fossils. There are a few stone structures across the world that do contain fossils. However, there are clear signs that these crude structures were built after the worldwide flood, and these structures were made from rocks that were created by the flood. The Long Barrow in England is one example, a stone on the left side of the entrance contains a fossilized Ariatite's ammonite. 
This creature became encased in sediment and was compacted and lithified during the worldwide flood. Upon lithification, this fossil-bearing rock was carried by the floodwaters and deposited among softer, less compacted sediment, which remained dirt. Post-flood people created a burrow in the dirt, using the rock already present in the soil as a support for the structure, leaving the large stone where it was, because they didn't have access to the stone-lifting technology required to move it. As most of the stone-lifting technology was destroyed during the worldwide flood, the post-flood builders had stacked smaller stones alongside and between the large rocks as additional supports for the structure. The structure was simply built around the large rocks that were created and deposited by the flood. No aspect of the long barrow in England indicates that the structure was created before the worldwide flood. It is rather rare to find geological formations that are flawless or non-clastic in geological terms. Even small rocks generally have veins, specks, clasts, stratifications, foliation, or other types of visual flaws. Modern structures made of natural stone contain these types of visual flaws, whereas pre-flood structures not made of igneous rock do not contain these characteristics. An example of a modern structure made from large stones is the Coral Castle in Florida. The megaliths composing this structure are made of organic oolitic limestone, which is made from coral and shells. Although this type of rock is clearly suitable as a building material, no pre-flood structures were ever made from this type of rock. Originally, before the worldwide flood, and before the smaller catastrophe that preceded it, there were only inorganic rocks, and they were uniform in appearance. They did not contain fossils, stratifications, or any other type of class or defects. This is because the original rocks on Earth were not created by the accumulation of sediment, nor were they created by volcanic activity. They were created by God, which is why they were perfect. These original rocks include the non-stratified and non-clastic inorganic limestone and sandstone that pre-flood structures were built with. During the first cataclysm on Earth, which was the smaller of the two ancient catastrophes, the first igneous and metamorphic rocks on Earth were made available by the tectonic activities. After the first cataclysm, the ancient builders took advantage of the newly available igneous and metamorphic rocks and used them to create structures. Eventually, the second, larger catastrophe occurred, which involved worldwide tectonic activity and flooding. This devastating and widespread destruction created stratified and organic sedimentary rocks, as the extensive and immense flooding wiped out the majority of life on Earth and compacted the sediment and organic matter into the organic limestone that can be found across the world in large quantities now. The worldwide flood also created the vast majority of metamorphic rocks on Earth due to rocks and minerals being subject to high heat, high hydrostatic pressure, and hot, mineral-rich waters. These are the causes of metamorphism, and are also the catalysts of fossilization, and are the exact conditions created by the worldwide flood. Thank you to those who have supported Shattered History through Patreon and through YouTube's Super Thanks. Mama Lu, Boris Castillo, Chris Malloy, Chenko, Yonatan Katz, Paul Freeman, and Bugaton, Matthew Tyler, Jacob Jirasek, ALV, Top Secret, Nathaniel Lee, Liam Flatley, Ablobonic, Joseph Thompson, and Lumen AR 